Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be continuing our Carbon Star 150 series. And this is the third video in my series. So if you've missed my prior ones, I'll put that link in the description. But my first video was the unboxing. I also assembled it. I also put the EAF on there and we did initial collimation with the Hotec SEA laser. Also, my second video was the first night out with the Carbon Star 150. And in that video, I did a out of the box experience with it. And it went pretty well, except that we have a do problem. Now, I was expecting do to collect on the mirrors. I just didn't know how long it would take because on a Newtonian, the mirrors are kind of encased in this tube and I really needed to know how fast it would do up. And it took about an hour. I only got 56 minutes of exposure time. And we need to solve that issue before we move on in the series because the next video after this is the internal reflection test. Some people say you just need a dew shield. Other people say you can just wrap a dew heater around there. Uh, also, some people will suggest a secondary mirror heater. It's the first time I've actually seen something like that. And remember, this is my first Newtonian. But before we get into all those solutions that might cost money, I'm going to use a solution that I already own. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to use a dew shield for sure, and I'm going to use the Celestron C6 aluminum dew shield that I have. And I love this dew shield, number one. Uh, and it's because of these, there's these little tabs inside. I don't know if you can see them, but it tells me when to stop pushing this dew shield onto the OTA, number one. And it also ensures that it is flat on the OTA as well. So I've seen some dew shields where they're kind of crooked when you mount them. Uh, these tabs make sure that it is level and flat on the OTA. Nice thing too is they're felt lined, right? So I'm not going to be scratching up my nice red anodized metal up here. And then not only am I going to be using this dew shield, I'm also going to be using some dew heaters. And I'm just going to use my little 5 volt. SV Boney dew heaters that you keep seeing me with. But uh, since I need to wrap this around a six inch aperture, I'm going to use two of them. And we'll see how far I get with that before I start spending money on something else. Not trying to spend more money in the hobby, even though I know I'm going to. Also, we're going to do a little bit of experimentation. I did call out in my last video that I wasn't quite comfortable undoing these screws and then rotating the coma corrector in order to plate solve rotate or plate solve frame night after night, right? I just have this nightmare that I'm going to do that and this is going to be underslung and it, my camera and everything just drops out of it. But I think I just need to get used to the fact that that's just how Newtonians are. But to satisfy my own curiosity, I actually got a rotator. And this I got from Agena Astro. And this is a M48 by 0.75 thread, 360 degree rotator. And it's their CAA, is what they call it. And it's pretty high quality, actually. It's got some nice markings on it. I'm going to try not to knock my scope off my table. But it's, it's rather nice, and it's got a really tight feel to it, so I think I could be successful with this. If it adds too much tilt to the system, I'm just not going to use it at all. just going to have to get used to the fact that I just need to loosen these and just rotate my whole imaging train on there, which is no big deal, too. But I am curious. I'm sure some people are, too. Uh, now, this has a back focus in itself is 13.5. The ring that it's replacing is 16.5 millimeters. So I need to add three millimeters of back focus 
to that. And to facilitate that, I printed out a one millimeter spacer ring. Look at, I got this cool orange, well, this, it's kind of rainbow colored filament, which is really cool. Uh, well, I printed out a one millimeter and a two millimeter spacer ring, and that should give me the proper back focus. Now for tonight's target, we're just going to continue to shoot the heart nebula because what we're going to do is compare night one data to night two data and then combine them. So not only are we going to look for reliability of the equipment I'm using, the SCA laser and also the scope, but also hopefully we'll solve our do problem at the same time. So with that, let's get on out there. All right, guys, we are going for it tonight. Check it out. It has already hit dew point. <laughs> Got all that fog on the field. It's perfect conditions to try out some dew control on this Carbon Star 150. So I'm going to get set up. Hopefully we'll have a couple hours. Can't promise that. Uh, and it's not necessarily totally clear tonight. So we have that against us, but we're going to give it a shot. All right, y'all, I'm imaging right now. Check it out. Got my dew heaters, dew heating. I got my dew shield, dew shielding, and I have my rotator rotating. I'm telling you, uh, the rotator really helped with framing tonight. Um, I hope it works out because it was really awesome working with something like that. And as you can see, it's really early tonight. There's uh, still rush hour traffic. It's uh, 717 right now. So we're going to try and shoot till at least 10. And I got my heating system on low right now. So we'll see if it fogs up. Uh, and I'll probably adjust it throughout the night. So, all right, wish me luck, guys. Wish me luck. I also added a safety bolt just in case. That uh, D style dovetail is pretty slippery so I put that in there just in case it slides all right we got our first sub just returned and I'm actually scared to look at it <laughs> I just I don't know if I can replicate the results I had <laughs> I know it's silly but uh let's check it out here okay oh man that looks gorgeous okay we got some good collimation going on right now not bad, actually. Nice glowy stars. They aren't triangular. Getting some sharp detail on Merlot 15. Whoo! Oh my gosh, man. So, with the Hotec laser collimator, I was able to reproduce what I had the first night out. So, we're establishing a pattern, right? We're establishing that this collimator can collimate this scope. And I'm just hoping that I didn't move my tube because I was messing with it. That way my diffraction spikes will line up. If not, it's not a big deal. You know, I'll just take the best stack of stars and use that as my stars over a starless image. But, you know, I just want to have a smooth operation with this thing right now. <laughs> All right, apparently we're on the lookout for a Husky. See this guy over here with the headlights or that big flashlight? I guess there's a lost husky somewhere around here. So if I see him, I'm gonna give this guy a call. Um, God, that's heartbreaking, you know what I mean? Especially out here right now during the fall, it's so cold. So, but maybe we'll see it tonight. Good news guys, it's been an hour and my optics are still clear. So I'm just assuming that my dew shield and dew heating solution is definitely working. My subs are still really sharp, doesn't seem to be interfering uh, with the data that I'm getting. Although I'm getting a lot of satellites <laughs> in my shots right now, but I think it's just where the heart nebula is in the sky. So I'm going to keep shooting and uh, I'll report back if anything happens. Jeez, look how dewy it is, guys. Ooh, man, look at that. That is crazy. 
And we got some clouds coming in. Those are the 10 o'clock clouds. They're slowly making our, its way over here. But geez, look at the dew. But my scope is uh, still gone. I like how the clouds are moving in this way. And there's no clouds over here, which is great. But I like it's like it's just this band right here that's just going to cover my target. <laughs> it's just my luck, you know what I mean? Well, I'm just going to shoot as long as I can. But dang, look at the look at the dew. Oh my gosh. Alright guys, the seeing, as you see, is getting really bad. So I'm taking my flats right now and I'm out of here. I almost got my three hours. It didn't quite fog over, but it's just, the seeing is just not great right now. So I'm just gonna stop and get some better data on a better night. But I'm glad I got out tonight and my dew heater and my dew shield is working perfectly. And also my rotator, man. That was a big surprise. I thought it'd have some type of tilt. So everything's working out as it should. Alright, Egg. Well, I guess this is good night. Well, that was an amazing night, wasn't it, right? And we got to shoot for more than an hour on the Heart Nebula. Now, before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about our dew problem. Now, I think we did solve our dew problem last night. The dew shield and also the dew heaters really did keep my mirrors nice and clear. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to spend any more money on it. And um, it didn't really impact my image quality at all by using dew heaters as well, because I know that was a concern from the forums. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But if you guys have any suggestions for me, uh, what to use for dew heating, let me know down in the comments. Also, the re rotator, right? What was that like? Now, we did use the CAA from Agena Astro. Now, honestly, when I was using this, and I was plate solving framing, I actually felt like I was duplicating my efforts because the comma corrector also has screws like this on there. And as I was using my rotator, I was thinking to myself, well, I could just use my comma corrector and just be careful and rotate my imaging train that way instead of using this. So it took me to install this to realize what I already knew. I don't really need a rotator on there. I'm just a refractor guy that is used to having a rotator, but I really don't need one. So this is going back to Agena. Sorry, Agena. But um, I could probably use that money towards something else in the hobby, right? Which is also exciting. That leaves our data, right? So let's take a look at that. So first, I got two subs for you guys to look at. So I got night one sub and then a night two sub. And what we're gonna see is, number one, uh, what our star shapes look like, because again, I just used the Hotec SCA. I just dropped it in the focuser. It didn't do any final collimation. I'm just aligning the mirrors with this at this point in time. So we're gonna check for that. And we're also gonna look for some tilt since I was using the rotator, but um, I can tell you I didn't get any tilt, but uh, let me show you here. Okay, so here is our night one data. And that's what that looks like. Let's, let's go into about 200%. I think that's good here. And we'll use this region of stars to judge things. So I'm gonna move this over here and 
Here's our night two data. Gosh, look at all these satellites that we're getting here. There's a satellite in this photo. There's a satellite in this one. Let's see. Okay, 200%. And these two subs are looking really similar right now. I think we got pretty good reliability out of the Hotec and also the optics in the Carbon Star 150. Now we have two cases where I've actually had a really good experience using both pieces of equipment and if i look at the night two data i don't actually see any tilt at least anything that's important maybe a smidge but again this is 200 percent. let's go into 300 percent. actually it's 400 let's go into 400 here i mean it's very similar I, if i'm squinting to see anything in there then i think we're we're really successful okay so here those are my two subs and let's bring up my stacked photo from night one so let me just put this over here hopefully all right and well that's actually my night two photo <laughs> hold on let me let me put that over there real quick. Okay, our night two, our night one photo here. Night one, oh my gosh. Uh, so you probably recognize this one. And uh, this was featured in my last video. And here's my night two. We got more data, number one. And the thing is, we got more oxygen three in there. And we can see it here in the night two photo. And also something magical is happening where because we're getting more oxygen three, the heart nebula is starting to turn that red, reddish color, right? And I still haven't captured any sulfur yet. But if we look in the center where Merlot 15 is, we got way more oxygen three because it's turning white in there. And honestly, if I mess with the blue in this, this whole area turns, actually the oxygen three in here turns blue, but not without color casting the other parts of space. So that means I need more signal. So I won't be doing that until I capture the sulfur data. And the neat thing about one shot color that I'm shooting it in, right, is it'll capture oxygen three at the same time. So I can, do a third night and hopefully maybe get three hours in the D2 filter and finish this out. I'm pretty confident I'll be able to turn uh, the inside of the heart nebula blue at that point. And I think it looks really good. And I got a lot more signal on this area too. If you look at it here, it's black. If you look at night two, it's actually a reddish color, right? And I just think that's super interesting, just how it's changing by adding more signal to the photo. So, and also up here in this region where the dust spires are, I mean, it's well defined in the second night data. Well, night one and night two data combined. So. The one on the right is night two and night one data combined. The one on the left-hand side is just night one's data. So I think we're pretty successful again. This was my second night out with the Carbon Star 150. And I think I can safely say I'm getting reliable results. So my next video is going to be a internal reflection test. We're going to be seeing if we get any internal reflections and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to shoot, I think two targets. So I think I'm going to shoot the ghost in Cassiopeia uh, because I know I can probably get out to the dark side about six o'clock that day. And later in the evening, as the Pleiades rise, we're going to shoot the Pleiades. 
Now, both areas has super bright stars in them. I think they're about magnitude two. So if I'm going to get any type of internal reflections, it's going to be there. <laughs> so don't miss that one, guys. That's going to be in the next video. And I guess there's only one thing left to do. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me on this one. Let me know what you guys think of the Carbon Star 150 so far. And I guess I'll see you in the next. Peace.